Hi all, let's do another in a five minute chess nutshell. This game is Benjamin Gladora against Western Topolov, round 10. We see a Slav defense from Topolov and with e3, bishop f5. Black doesn't mind his bishop being exchanged off here. g3, white fianchettos. Bishop b4, knight b6, quite a lot of pressure on the light squares are emerging. Semi open e file for black. That's used. A3, black gives up the dark square bishop, so it's two knights against two bishops. Now, but uh, is white going to be contained? Is the, is the bishops, are the bishops going to be contained? We see g4 here now. Black tries to double, potentially to try and keep a locking key. b5, locking down the queen side. So against the two bishops, this is a very much a game of containment at the moment. White maybe is interested in playing e4. Queen d6, it looks at a3, but this is just ignored. Uh, I, I believe the, bl the reason is white will be happy with queen takes a3 because of e4. Let's have a quick check there. I think the principle is if queen takes a3, e4, or even c4, apparently. Yeah, even c4. This is a bit dangerous because if takes bishop b4 yeah that's actually perhaps more to the point than e4 uh, c4 possibility for bishop b4 but yeah the bishops really need to be uh, contained here so we see that ignored just queen d7 so it's a bit of waiting and now again you might think there's a possibility here the rooks come off so it's not sporting bishop b4 but again it, it's not taken knight b2 if black takes this white liberates with e4 basically and even if taking this pawn then this position starts to be dangerous there's things like bishop h3 e6 so it's more of a containment at the moment trying to stop white from doing too much and stop white from liberating the position but white goes for it here d takes f takes so knight takes there'll be e5 with a good game for white uh, for example, bishop g5, and it carries on, uh, bishop h3, etc. So, has white broken out? Black used this opportunity to try and smash white center, c5, instead. Now relying on the pin, the two rooks, so stopping e takes. King f1, unpinning. c takes d4, now. But hold on, wasn't this unpinned? Well, if white took on f6, there follows queen takes f6. And, for example, with here, rook takes e1, bishop takes knight e3 check. It's very, very good for black. Black ends up just being loads of material up. Well, the exchange up and attacking the bishop here. So that's not possible to play e takes. We have c takes, queen takes d4. Same sort of tactics now, just from d4 taking on f6. White has to ignore this. He plays bishop c3. Uh, if he... Just as an example, there's two ideas. The, the one mentioned earlier, rook takes knight e3, or even just knight takes d2 here in this particular position, and rook takes e1 is just winning for black. So basically, after bishop c3, this is really bad. White center has been collapsed. Check. And same sort of ideas now. If the king moves, then knight takes g4 is a total pain. So rook f2, but now knight e3 check wins the exchange and you might think well doesn't white get the knight here well can you see what black plays in this position which is the final move of the game if I give you five seconds to pause the video now black to play okay nice finish Queen e1 check yeah it's mating so if takes rook takes e1 is mate Queen e1 a fine game from Topolov, showing he's willing to give up both bishops. He had a very interesting game there, trying to restrain white. I think it's quite instructive, some of the ideas here in this game. Hope you do too. Comments, questions, likes, appreciated. Thanks very much.